and I feel like a blanket can be a whip forever. Hi, and welcome back to Knit All the Things uh, with me, Laurel. I'm also known as West Maven on Instagram and Ravelry. Um, today is my first kind of podcast, um, so bear with me as I'm getting used to this. Um, but I wanted to share what I've been up to since the beginning of the year. So if you are new, Welcome. If you're returning, thank you so much. Um, get cozy and let's just get into it. What I'm wearing, get that out of the way. This is the Rubinia sweater by Ann Vinsel. Um, it is a knit with Chelsea yarn, uh, stonewashed and wandering flock mohair in the color cosmic tie dye. Uh, then treehouse knit. In these two colors. In Mermaid Tails and Nautical, and that is held with Kin Yarn Mohair in Baby Boy. So, I absolutely love how this sweater turned out. It's very cozy. The um, shoulder detail and how the arms are are the best. Um, we also have a little visitor of my puppy. Probably gonna sleep and snore the whole time. So if you hear snoring, that's what you're hearing. Hopefully, I'm not boring anybody else as much as I'm. So, I cast on two different projects um, that I've been kind of consistently working on. Um, First, I had purchased an Advent in 2021, and I haven't used it um, really at all. I left it in skeins and just kind of moved it around. And then when everybody was starting to try to make plans for their Advents during Christmas, I really wanted to find a uh, project that I thought would be fun and wearable. Um, even though I would say this advent is a lot, is a lot pink. It's a lot more pink than I would normally wear. Um, at least the brightness of the pink. I do like a good blush, um, or like a mauve tone, but this is lovely too. And I really do like it. It's going to be a very fun sweater. Um, so let me just show you what I have. Okay. So this is my Ferda sweater or Ferda Ginster. Um, I will link the pattern below. Um, about this pattern. So I would say one, definitely not beginner friendly. Um, you, I believe it, it would be very helpful if you have knit a few garments before making this. Um, only because it is a Norwegian language pattern that they have translated into English. Um, the pattern in total is 12 pages, both the Norwegian and the English. The first eight pages are Norwegian with pictures. The last four pages are English. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, it does feel a little bit like the scene um, in Lost in Translation where Bill Murray is doing a commercial and the people working on the commercial with them are conversing and then come back to him and tell him like one line to do. And clearly they had a much longer conversation. So part of me wonders <laughs> if I am missing part of that conversation or not, but I am able to make a sweater from it. So it's not impossible. It's just not um, hand holding, I guess you could say. And the construction itself is fairly simple. So 
if you're adventurous, this is a fun pattern. But it has this really cute motif. Just a moment. Um, it's just triangle and it's repeated. So you easily, easily, easily um, can memorize this. And each stripe is two colors. I, I'm sure I will repeat them all at least once, some of them twice. Um, not all of them, but it is a very fun, fun, fun pattern. Um, I'm used to patterns telling you um, bust size. And this particular pattern is described as laid flat, the chest measurement is. And so I was able to just take that information, pick a sweater that is raglan that I really like, that chest measurement um, laid flat is the same amount. And so that's how I kind of came up with picking my size. Um, and it also gives another option in the link where I believe, because it feels like this pattern, or from what I understand, is really unisex. And so depending on body type, you may or may not want a longer torso length. So that is kind of all about that. The advent that I used was uh, Sweet Nesting. And again, I believe a lot of her advents are, I mean, they're not the same, but they definitely have her color sense and her vibes, which is like bright, happy colors. And so I'm sure if you got an advent from her later on, you could do something similar. The other thing about the sweater is it's originally shown in four colors. So you could easily pick four colors that you really like and do it that way, or you can do this kind of scrappy looking project. So I feel like there's a lot of options with it. It is just, again, not the clearest pattern and it's not terrible. It's just not, I, I don't know if I highly recommend it at the moment, but it's not bad. So that's the Ferda Ginzer or Ferda sweater. And I will link that below. Other thing that I have been working on and I cast on like Monday, a uh, ranunculus sweater. And this would be my first. I know a bunch of people have made it. Um, I waited, and that's fine. I like to take my time in deciding if I actually want to wear it or if I'm trying to jump on a trend. Um, and I really like this one. So I used matchmaker yarns in her fingering and mohair and her fingering color is blur oh no nope, the base is flirty i guess this just was her color of 2022 and then i'm holding it with this like pink mohair so i do like how the pink is kind of toning down the, the how purple it is and it's kind of pulling some of the pink tones out. So I am really liking how it's turning out. Um, and it's also helping with some of the variegation that is different, kind of looking a little bit more um, uniform. But that's what I have so far. Again, nothing spectacularly <laughs> uh, unique or different than maybe someone else has made, but I do really like it. One of the things that I wanted to get on here and talk about um, that I had had a conversation with someone on Ravelry about was uh, ways in which I acquire yarn. Um, because as I was talking to this person, I realized that one, Sometimes some knitters have a much larger budget 
or they use kind of more exclusive yarns or they um, use materials that are just more expensive. And that's okay. I, I do too. Um, but I also feel like sometimes, especially as a new knitter, you don't un always understand, one, all the options that you can substitute. Um, and two, like different ways in which you can find some of that higher end yarn for less expensive. So if this is something that interests you, please let me know in the comments below. Um, because it, if it is of interest, then I will hop on here and make a quick video of some of the items that I've acquired and the different ways in which I've done that so that um, maybe we'll demystify some things. And then moving forward, as I am kind of sharing different projects, um, I hope to be a little bit transparent in ways in which maybe I'm using more expensive yarn, maybe I just bought it, but also sometimes there's other ways. So if that's interesting to you at all, please let me know in the comments below. Next, I, um, my youngest son has a very cute raincoat that ha is blue with lightning bolts and on the inside is yellow fuzz. I can't think of what it's actually called. Um, and he has a little yellow rain boot. And he wanted a hat to match his little outfit. This is just how he is. And so this doesn't really fit me. This is his size. Um, but I made him a Manhattan hat. Whoa. I'm just going to do that again. I made him a Manhattan hat. And when I knit this hat, I used Spun Right Round's color pencil. Like, that's probably more accurate color-wise. So yellow tonal. And I was struggling with some risking at the time. And so a challenge kind of to myself was to incorporate using the Norwegian pearl method of purling. And I believe Arnie and Carlos have a YouTube tutorial, which is the one I watched and followed. Um, but it did seem to help my wrist, or at least not irritate it further. Um, but that did make this project take a little bit longer than I had originally anticipated. So that's the only thing I have finished for this year. One more thing that I don't tend to, I think, well, I don't want to say never, but at the moment I am leaning towards, I probably just won't be someone that does it too many, like, ooh, look what I got. But I did want to share this because I've been using it um, since I got it and have been feeling like it's helped quite a bit. So for that reason, I do want to share um, the Knitting PT. Andrea has these amazing balls that you can do various exercises and such with them. And when you purchase one from her, which they're, I would consider inexpensive um, for how much it's helped me already, um, you get videos to use with them. So. She has such a great website. You can find them on her website, The Knitting PT, which I'll link below. But I did want to share this as it's one of those things this week that has really helped, especially after I shared um, knitting that hat. The purling was really like bothering my wrist. And I feel like I am 98% back to normal um, with that hand. So I do think it has helped me personally quite a bit. Um, it's obviously not replacement if you have an injury and you need to go see a doctor, but just in general, um, I'm going to try very hard to put this into practice with me, um, moving forward. So I just wanted to share this as it's just something that's helped me quite a bit. Let me put it down. Uh, 
put. They come, I believe, in three colors. I got white. But they come in a pink and a blue and white. So I really like it a lot. Um, I highly recommend it. The videos are awesome. And that would just be like one little tip trick that I've used this week that I really enjoy. That I wanted to talk about. I've noticed a lot of people are putting like 2023 plans and I don't do great making solid plans only because I tend to feel not empowered by them, but um, trapped in a way. And so I do want to share some of my stash that I have like earmarked for certain sweaters and maybe go through some of those and go through some whips that I have um, just with the intention of getting organized myself and figuring out how I kind of want to proceed with some of these things. Um, I have certainly whips from two years ago, some from five, four or five years ago. So I do have some pretty old ones. Some of them are blankets and I feel like a blanket can be a whip forever until you're ready to be done. Um, but I do have one garment that has been just sitting there that I could finish, but I'm not stuck necessarily, but I feel a little stuck with it. Um, but I've had also a lot of time to think it through <laughs> and I'm pretty sure I could proceed if I want to. So I wanna dig some of those things out and share those. Um, and yeah, so that's what is kind of coming up next. And as far as that, that are all, those are all my updates. Um, I hope you enjoyed uh, this episode. If you did, please uh, make sure to give it a thumbs up below and um, subscribe so you can be notified when my next video drops, if you will. Also, I do believe my kind of tentative, quote unquote, goal, because I just talked about how I don't like to box myself in, um, will be filming these every two weeks or so. That feels very doable to me. Maybe I will do it more. But for right now, I feel like every couple of weeks, giving an update feels comfortable and good. So if I want to do more, great. If not, I'm not pressuring myself. This is for fun. Um, and I want to keep it that way. So that's kind of what I anticipate going forward. Um, if you have any questions or you want to connect with me, please reach out on Ravelry or Instagram. I'm at Ralph Maven. And have a beautiful day. Happy knitting. See you soon.